I am currently in Abu Dhabi. I have hijacked this tiny office, my brother's office, and I'm recording the videos from here at the moment. Starting off with today's topic, imagine that you have to give the user the ability to control the columns that he would like to see in the table loaded in Excel or in Power BI. How awesome is that going to be? And of course, the bonus that you'll be learning along in this video is that to how do you stage your queries so that they become more structured and probably even a bit faster as well. All right, no further ado, let's do this together. All right, fellas, I'm in Excel and I have opened three Excel files which are in the folder. And you're going to notice that all of the three Excel files have nearly got the same headers, but I want the user to be able to control the ed headers that he or she would like to see in their model. So in the first Excel file, we have date, sales, rep, customer, amount, profit, and the region and all of these columns. The second file also almost has the same columns, but maybe a few columns are missing. Some columns are there, some columns are not there, new columns, things like that. And the third Excel file also has nearly the same columns, but the user should be able to decide that what columns do I want to have in my model and what columns I do not want to have in my model. All right, so let's just fire up Power Query, bring all of the data inside of Power Query and start from there on. All right, people, before we proceed, here is a quick rundown of the logic that we are trying to build here. The first step is to create a staged query, a base query that is going to go ahead and connect to that Excel. And from the Excel, it's going to get the data of all the Excel files. Then from that query, I will create another query that combines the data of all the three Excel files. No matter what the column is just going to combine all the columns that you have in all the Excel files, but the user doesn't really want to have all the columns. Then we're going to create another query that gives the user the ability like a user interface where the user can control the columns that the user would like to see. And then those columns are the only columns that are going to appear in the query that we are working on. It's going to be a lot of fun. You will understand once I work on it. Obviously, let's just fire up Power Query. So I'm in a blank Excel at the moment and I am going to go to the data tab. And here is where I'll say get data from other sources and I will start with a blank query. Let's just give our blank query a name for that moment. I'm just going to call this as base query which is going to connect to my Excel file. Let's just start to write a function that does that. So I'm going to use the function called folder.files and in the folder.files, it's asking you, hey, where is the folder path where all the Excel files are there? In the inverted commas, because that's a text, I will feed the folder paths right here, press enter, and hopefully that should give me all the files which are there in that folder. Now, at the moment, I can take a look at the file. So binary simply means a file. From the file, I have to go to the sheet level data and from the sheet level data, I have to actually grab the data so that the data is right here. So how do we transform the binaries into a readable format so that Power Query is able to read the data inside of the file? I'm going to use a function called excel.workbook. So I will click on the FX right here. Let's just give us this step a name, Excel table, and I am going to use the function table.transform columns, right? Once I do that, it is asking me, hey, what table would you like to transform? Source, which is nothing but the previous step, is the table that I would like to transform. But the transformation is going to be done on, on this particular column. And what is my transformation? Pick every single binary and convert it into a more readable table format. So source, comma, and then I will start the curly braces. In the curly braces, I will write the name of the column, which is nothing but the content column. And for every single file that I have, I will say that please use excel.workbook function and please also promote the headers. That's the true right here. All right, close the bracket, press enter, and this is what I get. Now, if you don't really understand this stuff that I've written alongside the lines of each underscore and the true, I'm gonna leave a link to two videos. One is to understand what each and underscore means, that's one. And secondly, what the hell is this true trick to promote the headers? You will enjoy that a lot. For the moment, I would like to show you the table that we have created. So. If you take a peek into the table, this table is the preview of the sheet data inside of that Excel. So in that first Excel file, 2005, we had just one sheet and that's the name of the sheet. That's the data of the sheet and a few other properties of that sheet. Now let's just expand this particular column. So I'll click on expand and all the columns get expanded. Uncheck the name prefix, click on OK. And that's the data that I have at the moment. And now if you happen to peek inside of the second column, which is the data column, you're going to see that this is where all the tables or all the data of that Excel file or that sheet is residing. So that's the data of sheet one, uh, 2005 Excel file, 2006 Excel file, seven Excel files, so on and so forth. Now, 
From here on, what we would want to do is we would want to break the query and stage the query. Remember, we have two more things to do. We would want to combine the data for only the selected columns of the users. That's one. And we would want to build the ability for the user to select the column. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new query. So right click new query, other sources and a blank query. And I'm going to call this query as combine data. All right. Now this query is going to reference this particular query, base query. And all that this query is going to do is go to this, get the data column, pick up all the tables and combine the columns, all of the columns so far. So I'm going to go ahead and say something like equals to base data, base query, press enter. It gives me the entire query from this query. I'm looking at only the data column. So I am just going to put that in the square bracket data, press enter. I get all the tables and I will just combine all the tables together. So the function that I'm going to use at the moment is table dot combine, start the bracket and close the bracket, press enter and all the columns get combined. However, this is not what I need at the moment. I want the user to be able to tell me what columns do they need. All right. The final part of this query is to give the user the ability to select the columns that he would like to see in the final loading of the data. So I'm going to create one more query. So new query, other sources and a blank query. And I will again reference it to the base query, which contains all the data. So I'm going to call this as columns and I'm going to equals that to the base query right here and press enter. I am going to get all the data uh, columns and the tables right here. For the moment, I will do the same thing, which is uh, getting the list of the tables that I have. And I will combine all the tables, which is going to combine all the data from the tables. But at the moment, you're going to realize that I don't need this because I've already done that in the combined data query. However, I would like to have the list of the columns. So from the combined data that I have, I can just pull up the names of the columns using the function table dot column names, start the bracket and close the bracket in the end. This gives me a list. But the problem by having a list is that you can't really filter a list by the user interface. It's not very convenient for the user to be able to ask him to write a code to filter the list, although you can do that. But instead, if this list would have been a table, it would have been far easier for the user to apply a filter, select the columns that he or she needs. That's nice. So I'm going to convert this list into a table. Obviously, you can do that in the transform tab and convert it into a table, but we're going to use the M code for that. And the function to do that is table dot from list, start the bracket and close the bracket in the end. And that is going to convert it into a table. Once you have the table, what you can do is you can ask the user, hey, user, should you want to choose any columns from this particular table? You can choose that. So let's just say the user chooses the columns as, hey, I want to have the date. I want to have the name, the customer, and I want to have the amount. These are the three columns that I need. Click on OK. And that's what I get. Now, these three columns are going to be picked up from the current query and will affect this particular query, which combines all of the data at the moment to limit to only these three columns that the query is seeing at the moment. So I can go back right here and I can say that table.combine function has the ability to choose what columns do you need to combine. The columns that you need to combine are going to come from this particular query, which is columns. But notice that the columns that we're going to write here should be provided as a list. So I'm going to maybe go ahead and reference the columns query right here, C-O-L-S, which at the moment is not is not a list. So to be able to convert this into a list, I need to write the column name right here. So table name is nothing but columns, square bracket, column one is going to convert it into a list. And that and that is only the columns that we would like to load it in our model. And of course, you're not going to load this particular query. You're not going to load this particular query. And this is the only query that gets loaded in the model. And should the user wants to change the filter later, he can come back to this query very conveniently. Use the filtering user interface of Power Query to be able to filter the columns, choose the columns that he or she needs. Even if the columns goes up or down, it's going to show up right here. The user can choose it and that is going to affect our combined data. And those are only the columns that you will see up in the model. One additional parting thought that you're going to appreciate is that at the moment we have three columns, date, customer and the amount. And you obviously have to apply the data types to these columns for these columns to function well in your model. Now, when you apply the data type, which is, let's say I apply the data type of this column to a date, the date column is actually hard coded. Now, 
what is going to happen if tomorrow the user decides that he does not want to have the date column for whatever reason or a new column gets added how are you going to make these data types dynamic is something that i will recommend you to watch in this video which is where we can take the first row as the sample row and detect data types based on that all right that's been it let me know how did you find this one and of course if you have any questions please put them down in the comments and before you go i would like to suggest these are the exact type of questions and problems and problem solving techniques that we discuss in our m course and if you would like to learn the M language, which is behind Power Query and level up your problem solving skill of cleaning data, building better models, I would highly encourage that you please take a look at my courses. It is going to be super, super awesome. And that's about it. Thanks so much for watching this. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next video.